Welcome to Mill Plain United Methodist Church Preschool Nursery Class Time. Yes, so we're back at it here. We're not at the church, so don't go there for it. Um, but you're welcome to my house. See, my house, see? Um, and we're going to start out by doing our ABCs just like we do every morning. And normally we would introduce everybody, so I'm not sure who's watching, but maybe you guys can let me know. And next time I'll be saying your name when we sing our ABCs. Now I know some of you guys are too old. You're like, I've sang ABCs a thousand times before, maybe a hundred. Um, so we're going to make sure that we recognize the ABCs as we sing them. So my name is Teacher Diane. It starts with a D. There's the duck, right? You guys know. That's my natural duck call. And then we have Teacher Ruth Ann, who's not with us right now. Um, she, that's, her letter is an R and a ring because she's very fancy. And then now I'm going to sing our ABCs. So you can sing along with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? And for more singing, I thought I'd bring a friend to help me sing. And you guys recognize the elephant from the nursery. And so he would like to help me sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay, today's lesson from our Sparks, Spark Story Bible is the sower. The sower. Jesus sat in a boat when he told some people on the shore a story about a sower who planted seeds in the ground. And some seeds landed in the path. Birds came along and ate the seeds so that the plants didn't grow. Some seeds landed in the dirt with lots of rocks. And the sun was too hot and burned those seeds so the plants didn't grow. And some seeds landed in the dirt with too many weeds. The weeds choked the seeds and so the plants didn't grow, but some seeds landed in good soil and the plants grew and grew and grew. Jesus wants us to share God's word like the sower who scattered the seeds. Just like some of the seeds that didn't grow, some people will not listen to God's word, but many people will listen and God's word will grow in them. Many people will not listen to God's word, and they would be like the weeds or the rocks, but there are a lot of people that would, and they want to hear that God is thinking about them. And so you could be the sower of the seed. You could tell people that God loves you. Um, so we talked about planting things in the soil, and besides planting God's word, we can also plant sunflowers and morning glories. I like to plant them together because the sunflower makes a very tall pole and then the morning glories use that pole to climb up and then make and use that to uh, um, display their flowers and it works good together and it's nice when things work together and so come with me and we'll find places to plant the flowers. Now in my yard, we could be planting flowers here. This is an area, but look at the weeds. Now if I put my seeds in the middle of that, how would that work? You think that would work at all? I don't think so. I think that they would take up all the nutrients and everything. And those little seeds, they're very small, some of them, especially the morning glories. I'll show you. 
They're pretty small and then we get completely lost in there. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and dump a couple in there just to see what happens. But the better place for these seeds is right here. This area of dirt that I've cleaned off. Oops. There's one weed. We're not going to let him get anything. And so I'm going to go ahead and plant a couple of seeds here. Maybe three. Now the bottoms of the sunflower seeds are pretty big. So, and when you all get a package of sunflower seeds, oh my goodness, can't even open this up. They're pretty big seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two in each one. Cause usually one maybe doesn't work or, and I can always pull it out later. And then I'm gonna cover it up with some dirt. Cause they plant a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to go ahead, take some morning glories, and I'll take put a couple of them around each one. There we go. And then cover that up with dirt. Again, we're covering it up because we don't want the birds to see the, the seeds, and they'll be thinking, wow, that's great. And now I'm going to be really careful in this area to make sure that nothing gets in there and disturbs my flowers we'll put a little water in them later but next week we'll take a look again maybe something will have sprouted that's gardening for today so one more story that i'd like to share with you and it's called do not worry jesus loved to teach people about how god wants people to live god takes care of us jesus said don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you might wear or whether you'll grow taller. God will take care of these things for you. Look at the birds. Do they worry about what they eat? Of course not. God makes sure they have food. Look at the flowers. Do they worry about the color they are? Of course not. God made each of them beautiful in their own way. And God made you beautiful too. You're beautiful simply because you are you. And then Jesus said, listen, there is far more to life than worrying. Worry gets you nowhere, so stop. There's one thing you need to do is put God first. Trust that God will take care of you. So one of the things that you, I know sometimes that people can get a little worried these days about different things. And guys, if you're worried about anything, make sure that you tell your mom and dad and don't just try to keep it to yourself because that would be like really good and share your love for God with people too. Okay, now it's time to read a couple of stories. And this one, I know this is one of your favorites. Um, this is, I tried to do the best I can pronouncing the dinosaurs' names. I'm not that good. Do you care? No, he doesn't care at all. <laughs> all right, this is 10 Little Dinosaurs. 10 Little Dinosaurs written by Patty L. Ooh, my goodness, Schnechter. Illustrated by Jim Harris. 10 Little Dinosaurs. 10 Little Dinosaurs bouncing on the bed. Pachycephalosaurus fell off and broke his head. Mom called the doctor and the doctor said, no more boneheads bouncing on the bed. Nine little dinosaurs riding on a bike. Stegosaurus crashed and smashed his spike. The policeman yelled from atop his trike, no more nut brains riding on a bike. Eight little dinosaurs munching on a mooth. Tyrannosaurus chomped and broke his tooth. The doctor, dentist, shouted from the dentist booth, no more sharp tooth munching on a mooth. Seven little dinosaurs rafting down the river. Spinosaurus flipped over and went all a quiver. The lifeguard said with a cold wet shiver, no more silly sails rafting down the river. Six little dinosaurs jumping off a peak. Archaeosceptrix dove and tweaked his beak. One called the ranger and the ranger shrieked, no more featherheads jumping off the peak. Five little dinosaurs playing on the street. 
Ankylosaurus yelled a car to beat. He charged the street, squeal, screech, bleat, sleet. No more dino tanks playing on the street. Four little dinosaurs acting sort of cool. Super Saurus wore his shades to school. The teacher sighed, why that's against the rules. No more super losers acting sort of cool. Three little dinosaurs on a camp out. Chasmosaurus asked, what the lava tube's about? He slid down the tube, then blasted out the spout. No more frill seekers on a camp out. Two little dinosaurs watching baseball. Sora Lopez yelled, hey, that's a bad call. The umpire didn't like that talk at all. No more big mouths watching baseball. One little dinosaur walking all alone. The sun burned triceratops into dried up bones. Look, called the scientist, at all those fossil stones. No more three horns walking all alone. No more dinosaurs hanging on the brink. They all disappeared in a geological wink. The doctor cried, well that just stinks. Poor little dinosaurs all extinct. So, and for the last book, I'm going to read to you Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon. Now, you guys have not seen this book yet. Um, got it recently, and I love it. And it's by Molly Lou Mellon stood taller than her dog and was the shortest girl in first grade. There she is. She didn't mind. Her grandmother told her, walk as proudly as you can, and the world will look up to you. And so she did. Okay, don't do that at home, not safe. <laughs> Molly Lou Mellon had buck teeth that stuck out so far she could stack pennies on them. She didn't mind. Her grandmother told her, smile big and the world will smile right alongside you. And so she did. Molly Lou Mellon had a voice that sounded like a bullfrog being squeezed by a bow constrictor. She didn't mind. Her grandmother told her, sing clear and strong and the world will cry tears of joy. So she did. Molly Lou Mellon was often fumble-fingered. She didn't mind. Her grandmother told her, believe in yourself and the world will believe in you too. Oh, a couple broken dishes. And so she did. My goodness. Then Molly Lou Mellon moved to a new town. She had to say goodbye to her grandmother and all of her friends. And start in a new school. On the first day of school, Ronald Durkin called her Shrimpo in gym class. And when the game started, Molly Lou Mellon caught the football, ran under the legs of Ronald Durkin, and scored a touchdown. And all the children thought, wow, she's good. And Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the second day of school, Roland Durkin called her Bucktooth Beaver. Molly Lou Mellon took out her pennies, stacked ten high on her teeth, and smiled as big as day. All the children smiled with glee, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the third day of school, Ronald Durkin said, You sound like a sick dunk. Honk, honk. Maya Lou Mellon sang out a quack so clear and strong that it made Ronald Durkin somersault backwards, hit his head, and have to go to the nurse. All the children cried with joy to be free of Ronald Durkin for the rest of the afternoon, and Ronald Durkin felt very foolish. On the fourth day of school, Ronald Durkin said she'd made Snowflake all wrong, but Molly Lou Mellon opened up her paper and revealed the most beautiful Snowflake of all. 
All the children oohed and awed, even Ronald. On the fifth day of school, Ronald Durkin brought Molly Lou Mellon a stacking penny for her tooth and smiled at her. That night, Molly Lou Mellon took out a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to her grandma. Dear Grandma, I want to tell you everything you told me was exactly right. Love, Molly Lou Mellon. Well, I hope you enjoyed Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon and Ten Little Dinosaurs and the stories from the Sparks Bible. And I hope you guys all have an excellent week. Make sure you get some sunshine if we have some out there. And enjoy the flowers and all the beautiful things. Have a good week.